The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. And for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the X-Zone comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Talkstar Radio Network, X-Zone Broadcast Network. H, uh, let me see, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, Ustream, and XONTV.com. If you'd like to give us a call toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is XON at XONRadioTV.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at Hotmail.com. And our websites, www.XZoneRadioTV.com. That's our main website. And to watch and listen 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year, starting this coming Monday, July 26th, www.xzonetv.com. My first guest tonight is Terry Daniel, and uh, Terry is an author, spiritual teacher, and certified transition guide who works with uh, assistance from the other side to advance a metaphysical perspective on birth, death, and the afterlife. Her recent book, A Swan in Heaven, is based on after-death dialogues between Terry and her son, who left the physical plane at age 16. Her new book, Embracing Death, A New Look at Grief, Gratitude, and God, examines cultural myths about the afterlife and offers a path to alternative perceptions via mediation, visualization, and channeling. Terry conducts workshops and metaphysical study groups around the United States and also counsels bereaved individuals by offering alternative perspectives on the experience of grief and loss. She has spoken on the topic of conscious death to community gatherings, churches, bereavement groups, and spiritual conferences, and her articles have been published in Whole Life Times, Neurology Today, Exceptional Parent, Pure Inspiration, Special Child, Children's Hospice.org, and related websites. Exonation, when I come back from this two minute commercial break that we have to take, Terry Daniel is going to be my very special guest for a most interesting and informative hour. Terry's website, www.afterlifeawareness.com. That's www.afterlifeawareness.com. Dot com. Before we go to the commercial break, I'd like to welcome our newest affiliate to the Exxon Broadcast family, KKRP AM 950 Rainbow 95 in the beautiful state of Oklahoma. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Once again, our contact number 1-800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. The X Chronicles newspaper comes out next week. Boy, do we have some great articles. I'm really excited about this issue. And uh, as we get closer to the distribution date, I'll be glad to tell you how you can get your very own link with the compliments of our advertisers. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the X Zone starts for Thursday, July 22nd in the year 2010. Don't go away.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Terry Daniels, my special guest this hour, Exonation, talking to Terry about uh, her recent book, A Swan in Heaven. And it's based on the after-death dialogues Terry has between her, herself and her son who left the physical plane at age 16. Terry's website is www.afterlifeawareness.com. And Terry, ja- Terry Daniel, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you. Great to be here. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit of, of the history uh, behind your, the fabulous work that you do in, in grief counseling as a certified transition guide. Well, um, it all started, I suppose, you know, way before this lifetime. I had always been interested in mm-hmm. metaphysical studies. And when my son was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness at age 10, all the pieces sort of began to come together. When I realized that he was not going to live more than five or ten more years and started to look at the world completely differently because of this experience of what does this mean, what is the lesson, how are we all moving forward through this experience, rather than, oh my God, why did this happen to me? (laughs) Um, It started to make sense what I was intended to do, why I came to Earth um, to teach and to do this work. After my son died, he began speaking to me from the other side, very clearly, very easily, very quickly. Um, We had absolutely lucid dialogues, which became the content of my last book, A Swan in Heaven, and I was able to kind of travel back and forth across the dimensions with him, where he explained to me what it's like to die, what happens, what is the journey of the soul, and um, this is now what I teach. And of course, my biggest audience is uh, people who are grieving, Mm -hmm. bereaved parents in particular. Tell me, uh, Terry, after doing the work that you've been doing for this time, why do you believe people are afraid of death? Well, um, uh, at the risk of offending some of your listeners, the real basic answer to that question is religious doctrine, Western Judeo-Christian religious doctrine. The notion of a judgmental God is primary reason for the fear of death. If you look at other cultures that don't have that type of theology, yes. um, people don't have a fear of death. It's really kind of a uh, Abrahamic religious tradition, Judeo-Christian Islam, because there is a concept of heaven, hell, and judgment, and the idea of God mm-hmm. as uh, a man in the sky who has an opinion and watches over us, and if, if we don't do everything right, we go to this horrible place called hell. That is absolutely not true. And um, I try to, among other things, help people work with that image and get rid of it if possible. What kind of beliefs make the grief process more difficult? Are we just looking at the at the religious implications, or are there, are, are there other social, sociological aspects that people really don't want to talk about? Well, that, there's so much to that question. I mean, it's not just the religious doctrine and heaven, hell, and judgment, but I have found in hospice work and in grief work that people who believe that there is nothing non-physical, that after the physical body dies, mm-hmm. it's just flatline, blackout, nothing, I actually find that those people have more problem, more difficulty dealing with death and grief than anybody else. That is probably the biggest obstacle, is the sense that there is total annihilation. And I I think I might actually even say that that's the biggest 
um, reason why people are fear, afraid of death. They're afraid that they're going to disappear because they only identify with the ego aspect of the self, this physical body, who I am. You know, mm-hmm. I live in this city and I have this name and these are my children and this is my work and all that earthly stuff. And the idea of that disappearing to many people is like the end of existence. If we realize that there is no end of existence, that there is another aspect of ourselves, our soul or essence or divine light or whatever you want to call it, that continues to exist in other forms and other dimensions, then there's nothing to be afraid of because there is no annihilation. Uh, and the other aspect of what you were asking about mm-hmm. social uh, stigma, um, yes. you know, death is unspeakable in modern Western society. And I'm sure we've all experienced this when there's a death in the family or we're grieving. You know, there's a whole list of behaviors that are very predictable and common around death where people won't talk about it. People will say, okay, it's time to let go of your husband who just died and move on and get on with your life. It is absolutely unspeakable. And that is heartbreaking. That makes it even more difficult for people because they want to talk about the experience exactly. of having someone die. Of course. You know, it's also, it's always boggled my mind why we don't celebrate the person's life at their time of passing. Why it has to be such a, a oh gosh, uh, a a downtime. You know, if we if we're looking at someone's life, no matter how short or how long it has been, there are always good points that we can remember the person by. Uh, look at the Irish; they they ha- they celebrate the 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 life of the dearly departed. It's it's a part of life; we can't get away from it. Is it? And I often wonder if Mother Nature has been showing us from the very beginning of time that our existence in this meta, in this biological physical body is nothing but us in the caterpillar stage of our life. That. Death is nothing more than a metamorphosis into a another chapter of the encyclopedias of life that we each have on a wall. Well said. That's exactly right. And you know, it's interesting you mentioned nature because nature does show us this. All we have to do is look at an actual caterpillar mm-hmm. or go into your garden and look at what's happening to your plants. And they go through their life cycle, they flower, they reproduce, then they quote, die, yeah. and they go back into the soil as compost, and then and the next plant grows. We are no different than that. But we have something that plants don't have, and that's an ego. We have this self-awareness um, that makes us feel, and there are reasons for this, that we are exclusive, you know, in a kind of arrogant way that, well, I'm a human being, and I have a body, and I have a mind, and I have an identity, and so therefore... I'm not like a plant or an animal or a star system. I'm something different. And that is a misconception. We are not something different. I, I'm, I'm certainly not saying that the loss of someone is, is not um, to be grieved. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that I, I think we should celebrate the person's life, that we should, like you and I were discussing a few moments ago, look at what nature has taught us that we are part of the same realm. And I believe, and this is just my very own personal belief, that when we leave this physical plane, it's not the end of our existence. But life does continue. It may be not as we uh, understand it and live it on this plane in this reality, but for those who have the ability to communicate with those who have passed on, as in your case, you know it's real, that life does continue, or, is, or the person's essence, their soul, their being, their spirit continues. You know, I'll tell you something interesting about that, and I love making this point. There is more evidence for the existence of the soul living on mm-hmm. after death than there is evidence against it. Because I haven't ever seen any evidence that it's just that after we die, everything's gone. There's no, you know... Nobody's, as they say, ever come back from the dead and told us, oh, yeah, everything just stops and it's just blacked out. But we have had thousands and thousands of people who've had near-death experiences and interdimensional communications and have 
told of, you know, leaving their body in the hospital and seeing what was going on in the room. And this is absolutely evidential. Mm -hmm. There's no other way they could see that. So we actually have more evidence in favor of that than the other way around. You know, we also have we also have religious proof of that because Christ Himself resurrected from the dead, and He did come back according to Christian uh, Christian beliefs. And that's a, a very good argument to make mm-hmm. with fundamentalist Christians. However, they will tell you that only Christ gets to do that, and that's where the idea of separation from God, you know, comes from. Is that these kinds of mystical, transcendent experiences? are only available to prophets and saints and, and people like that. And, or another idea that they have is that these kinds of experiences only happened during biblical times, and now they don't happen anymore. Well, why would that be? Well, it, it <laughs> wouldn't. It, you see, it wouldn't, and their arguments are no longer valid, thanks to the exactly. thousands and thousands of people who have made that trip across have gone as far as the gates and then returned. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. And I it have does. never seen any documentation of somebody who can tell us that they made that trip across and there was nothing there. I have never heard of an, uh, an encounter like that. Have you? No, I haven't. However, I have heard encounters from doctors, lawyers, physicists, NASA scientists, musicians... Uh, politicians, lawmakers, to the contrary, that they have had the near-death experience. And until they had the near-death experience, they were skeptics. However, when they've come back, their life has changed. They are no longer skeptics. And you know what? They do not fear death any longer. And when you stop fearing death like that, life gets better. That's, you know, that's a little hidden benefit of it. It's like, well, what difference does it make if we fear death? We still have to plod along through life. But actually, you find that if you're not afraid of disappearing, that you live each day with, with a different kind of value on it. You know, because you realize that you're accumulating experience. You see things differently. For example, if Terry, you- I hate to cut you off, but I've got to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Terry, um, let me see. What are you telling me, Craig? Gotcha. Terry Daniel is our very special guest of this hour. She is a certified transition guide who works with assistance from the other side. And we're going to be continuing this very interesting conversation with Terry when I return uh, from the other side of this commercial break with the news right here in the X Zone. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. Terry Daniels our special guest this hour. Her website is www.afterlifeawareness.com. Uh, t- Terry, how do you justify a violent, untimely, or tragic death, then? 
Well, this is kind of a complicated uh, question. Terry, are you there? You can't hear me? I can Hello? now. You faded out on us, Terry. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, is it all good now? Yes, Terry. Um, okay, so um, the soul always knows its plan. Mm-hmm. The body that we're in, or the personality, or the ego, or the earth self, you know, kind of lives at the ego level and thinks only about, you know, how do I survive, how do I compete, how do I get money and safety and love and sex and food and all that physical stuff. But the soul has a completely different agenda. And the soul has this all kind of planned out with other members of the soul family in between incarnations. These plans are made according to what each person would like to learn Mm -hmm. in their next incarnation. It's like planning your curriculum at college. So whatever kind of death there is, is exactly the right death to further the growth of everybody involved. So, for example, in a slow death like my son, who was sick for many years, there was a lot of time in earth time to prepare for that idea, to look at it and and figure out what the lessons are, and to literally see his soul slowly separating and traveling between the worlds. If somebody gets hit by a train, there isn't, time on the earth plane to actually witness that process, but it is still planned that way. And, you know, you hear stories, I hear this all the time from people, about somebody who got all their bills paid and made peace with their, you know, people that they were in feuds with and did all that, and then a week later had a heart attack and died. So at some level, people know. Um, There's a wonderful story I heard about a teenager who died and they found out, uh, he got in a car wreck or something. His family found out that in the weeks prior to that, this kid had called on the phone most of his friends from Facebook just to say hello and have an in-person conversation with them. Now, nobody does that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with their Facebook friends. But this kid did this, and after he died, people started talking, and they compared notes and realized that he had called them just to say hello. It wasn't suicide. So on some level, we know. So the violent death, the tragic death, unexpected death, death of a child, um, is as meaningful and purposeful as any other death. And you can follow the events leading up to it, the events beyond it, and see that all the people involved in this life and this death were part of a magnificent agreement to shift and change as a result of this experience. And uh, the way I often describe it is like a kaleidoscope. If you look at a kaleidoscope, every turn of the kaleidoscope shakes up the pieces Mm -hmm. and restructures them in a new way. That's what every one of our experiences is for. It's a very detached way of looking at it. You know, if your child gets hit by a train... Um, it's really difficult to say, well, it was just a turn of the kaleidoscope and everything's going to shake up and restructure. But on the soul level, that's exactly what it is. Tell me about the communications, Terry, that you've had with your son. Well, um, it before he died, he had a, a degenerative illness and he lost most of his physical abilities, including speech. And so during the last three years, as he was losing his ability to speak, I was gaining psychic ability. I have always been an intuitive. I have been doing tarot readings for 30-something years. And during the last three years of my son's life, I got this opportunity to be a tarot reader at a metaphysical bookstore. And that's what I was doing as he was losing his speech. And as I was doing these readings, I was beginning to channel. I was beginning to bring in guides and teachers, and the tarot readings became absolutely amazing. So my ability in that area was getting higher as his speech was getting less. I know now that that was in preparation for us to have a telepathic relationship after he died. He began speaking to me 30 minutes after he died. I was um, lying there on the bed with his vacant body, and I said, where are you now? Where are you? Can you show me where you are? And instantly, I just had this vision that bowled me over of him 
standing in some shallow water, looking tall and beautiful and strong and older than his actual physical years. And he was wearing jeans with rolled up cuffs and a white t-shirt. And I joke about this in my book. He looked like James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. And he was kicking his feet in the water and laughing. And I said, is this real? Is this really you? Am I really seeing this or am I imagining this? And he said, you will always be able to communicate with me this clearly if you do certain healing tasks for your heart. And that sort of led us onto a whole new path. But that's how it began. And the healing tasks are a big part of my teaching. You have to clear yourself of anger, of blame, of a belief that we are separate from the divine. There's a lot of processes that have to be cleared in order to reestablish our connection with the divine realms, because that connection's always there and we always have it. We've just shut it off. How often do you communicate with your son? Well, it's interesting because it's changed. It used to be that I would just kind of sit down and go into a meditative space and stuff would come. Mm -hmm. I've been a professional writer most of my adult life, and so writing is my tool. So I would sit down and I would kind of do automatic writing. I have this long document called the Danny Journal, and stuff would just come through as I type. About a year and a half ago, it completely changed, and now I can do that if I want to, but I don't have to. I very clearly remember a moment where I felt myself integrate with them, and by them I mean my son and the other teachers who are with him, because there's a whole group of them, and so now they're just kind of inside me. They're talking through me right now, and it was very weird, because I thought, oh, I'm, I'm losing this. I'm losing my ability to talk to you. And they said, no, we are just integrating with you. Your words and our words are going to be a composite now because there really is no separation. We're sort of running you by remote control like the man behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz. And now that's just kind of how it is. I just open my mouth and out it comes. Do you believe in life? Uh, did you believe in life after death communication before you began communicating with your son? I did, but I never really thought much about it. I mean, I was always metaphysically mm-hmm. inclined. When I was a teenager, I read the Tibetan Book of the Dead and really resonated with it. I wasn't raised with any real specific religious ideas, so my mind was pretty open to absorb whatever fit for me. So, um, yes, I believed in the journey of the soul. I believed in reincarnation, all of that. Um, I just never really thought much about it. It just made sense to me, and I filed that away somewhere. And now I realize why. I filed it away in a place where it could be accessed when it was needed. And here I am doing this work. So it was all, all for a purpose. Are you sure that the things you have learned are really true and not your not your beliefs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. And I'm sure that they're not my imagination. And this is really interesting because I have seen, you know, believing these things and mm-hmm. having these communications happens for a reason. It's just not for comfort, for the bereaved, or it's not a little party game. You know, it happens for a reason. What's the reason? The reason is to make your life and your existence make sense. What I have learned Mm -hmm. from all of this is a different way of looking at human experience. And looking at my own life, I see all my, you know, so-called bad experiences in a completely different way because of this. And that is how I know that what I've learned is true. Because this whole idea of, you know, tragedy being just a turn of the kaleidoscope, makes sense. Last year, all my work dried up. I had no money. My house was going into foreclosure. I didn't pay my mortgage for 13 months. And people were saying, oh, my God, this is a tragedy, a tragedy. You're losing your house. And I knew that it was just a turn on the kaleidoscope, that it was moving me to a certain thing. So during this year where I had no work and no income, I was able to finish my new book. I enrolled in school. I'm now working on a degree in divinity. 
And it was just the universe kind of kicking my butt, you know, and moving me into a different thing. So what I've learned from this work is, to put it in a, a cliche, is how to go with the flow. If you are aligned with divine direction and you can heed the signs and shift your perceptions, um, it makes your life so much more peaceful. So that's how I know that it's true because it's proven it to be true in my own experience. When communicating with your son or with those that you now communicate with on the other side, what have you learned about the other side? And what have you learned about the physicalities of the dying process? Well, um, the first most important thing I could say I've ever learned about the other side is that there is absolutely no judgment anywhere in the universe. When we die, the one thing that never happens is we go to a tribunal, you know, of, with God or whatever, and, and get judged. What does happen is we have to still work on our stuff. So um, I used to think that once we died and we got out of the body, we were just instantly enlightened, mm -hmm. and we were done and, until we come back again. But I very quickly found out that, no, we bring our issues with us to the other side, but we can work with them without the density of the body and without ego, and that's much more efficient. So, um, you know, I've talked to many mediums, and I don't consider myself a medium because I don't bring in other people or do readings, but mediums have told me that many times they've contacted people on the other side who were, you know, on their knees begging for forgiveness or still working through their stuff. So when we die, the curriculum continues. It's just a lot more efficient on the other side because we can see the Akashic record. We can uh, we understand how the kaleidoscope thing works. We can work with our soul families, and we see the plan. We're here on Earth. We don't see it. So that's probably the most important thing I learned, the most surprising thing I learned about life on the other side. And a lot of people ask me about suicide, and I will tell you that you know we do not get punished for suicide we get healed because suicide is um, the ultimate belief in lack of love. You know, the, mo the only force that exists in the universe, in the universe is love. Mm -hmm. The contrary force to that is fear. So when somebody commits suicide, it's coming from a belief that they are completely separated from love on earth and everywhere else. So what happens when that person dies is they are met, met by guides and angels and all kinds of healing beings who help them look at their various lifetimes and their you know, cycle of birth and rebirth and the issues that they're working on. I happen to think that suicide you know, is certainly not a sin. And I would be a terrible suicide prevention counselor because I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> try to talk them out of it. Yeah, go ahead. So I hope, yeah. I hope I hope nobody ever calls me and asks me to do that, um, because I have a, just a metaphysical mm -hmm. view of it. So um, the work continues, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And healing versus punishment is a huge issue. If, um, if you read Deepak Chopra's book, Life After Death, it's absolutely amazing. And he talks about Judeo-Christian concepts of judgment, and he said, you know, what if it, instead of judgment... Correction. All right, stand by, Thank Terry. You. you and I have to take okay. our final break for this hour. Terry Daniel is our special guest. Her website, www.afterlifeawareness.com. Terry and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Terry Daniel is my special guest this hour, X-Zone Nation. 
Now, if you'd like to find out more about Terry or contact her, www.afterlifeawareness.com. That's www.afterlifeawareness.com. She is the author of A Swarm, a Swan in Heaven and Embracing Death, A New Look at Grief, Gratitude, and God. First of all, Terry, great having you with us. Thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your your very unique but positive outlook on what happens to us and um, when we pass from this existence to the next. John Novello, a friend of mine, when his wife Gloria died of cancer, said, she's not gone, she's just graduated. I know John Novello. Please give him my best. Oh, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but um, he's a friend of a friend, mm-hmm. and I was introduced to him because of his book. Yeah. And uh, I, I love his book. is absolutely amazing. In fact, I think it was from his book where I got the term interdimensional communication. Yep. It's a great term. Tell me, what can people do if they want to communicate with a loved one that has graduated? Well, um, read my book. <laughs> read a lot of books. Exactly. Because that's very, very useful. You know, do some, start with studying if you mm-hmm. haven't done that yet. Read books like John's book and my book, um, Conversations with God, um, uh, uh, Sylvia Brown, all of them. That would be step one if you haven't already done that. Step two is I believe that it's really important to have a meditation practice of some sort where you uh, find a quiet space. You don't have to sit in a loaded position or make your mind blank or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. What you're trying to do in this process is open to channel a lot of people misunderstand meditation um, because they're thinking in terms of Zen meditation, which is a separate thing. But what we do when we're trying to open a channel is, you know how when you're just like falling asleep at night or daydreaming, there's just streams of stuff that come through your mind yep. and it's just like a movie playing and it's going by so fast that you can't really grab one image or one idea because it's just whizzing by. Um, the meditation process that mm-hmm. I teach is to allow all that stuff to just come through you. And by breathing and certain other processes, you can slow that down to the point where you can actually see and hold on to some of those images and messages for you know more than a microsecond. And you use um, a paper and pen, or better yet, a digital voice recorder, and you sit there and you record these images. So you are sitting there meditating and you say into your little voice recorder, I see uh, an apple. I see hey, Terry, a we're, we're going to have to send people to your website because we've just run out of time. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Look forward to talking to you in the future. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to find out more about our guest of this hour, Terry Daniel, her website is www.afterlifeawareness.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past as the X-Zone continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. 